The oldest experience I can recall goes back to the late 90s. I was six or so at the time and shared the bedroom with my older brother. The house we lived at was a couple hundred years old and our room was upstairs. The door right at the top of the final step so anyone who ascended would face our door directly before turning left or right to move along one of two hallways leading to other bedrooms. I was up a little later than usual one night, staring at the off television in the corner immediately to the left of the door. My mind spiraled with a colorful imagination of nonsensical childhood whim, a stagnated bliss suddenly interrupted by a creaking noise. My ears perked and started audibly tracking the noise coming from downstairs. I determined from where it originated that it was the basement door opening, which happened to be directly under my bedroom door. I heard something walking casually downstairs, making its way down the hall until it started ascending my staircase. I obviously can't remember what I was feeling at the exact time, seeing that was 20 years ago, but I'm sure I was having a hard time breathing, especially when my bedroom door suddenly clicked open. The door gently widened, opening into the room and revealing absolutely nothing on the other side. I could see the depth of the stairs due to the nightlight in the hallway to the left, and another in the room with me. Against all expectation, the television switched on to static before cycling channels. I don't know what late night show or rerun it landed on, but it stayed on one channel until the program finished. Agonizing terror and confusion gripped me while my eyes scanned for anything in the flickering light. The show soon ended, and the TV shut off. In under 30 seconds, my door eased shut, footsteps thumped lightly down the stairs, and the basement door opened and closed. That was the only time I experienced anything like that in that house. The Dream Eater The house we moved into was up a mountain and buried in the woods, not too far from town but hidden among the bark. The property was cleared of trees for the new house, and as far as we were aware, there was never anything cursed on that land and no prior residence. As such, the only problems we faced living there over the years was local wildlife. Bears, koi dogs, deer, moose, bobcats, etc. In my early teen years, I remember going out at dusk to take out the trash. I asked my friend to come along with me because the dumpster was at the end of the driveway with no exterior lights and about 200 feet from the house in total darkness. On top of that, I always had an uneasy feeling about the top of this one particular tree day or night. It was only a few feet taller than its siblings, but it only seemed that way after the sun had set. I remember going out during the bright summer days and just staring at this tree, fixated. I had dreams about it before, but couldn't remember anything beyond the fear it laced in my heart. My friend was aware of my apprehension, and of course came along to ease me. I thought nothing of this night in particular as it unfolded second by second. We made it to the end of the driveway me keeping my head angled to our feet. It was quiet. In short time, we arrived at the dumpster and discarded the trash. As my friend turned to head back to the house, that's when it happened. I remember my skin crawling and the hair on my arms standing on end. A nauseating dizziness struck me and this tight focus on my back forced me to turn around. He didn't notice right away that I had stopped walking. He made it about 10 feet for me when the absence of my footsteps tipped him off. He faced me, my back now to him, and both of us facing the dreaded tree line. My neck was crooked all the way back. I glared at the one particular tree. It was taller. He ran up to my side and grabbed my shoulder, speaking my name, asking me what was wrong. And just like some cheap horror movie, I raised one arm up without a word and pointed to the treetop. His eyes followed, but he didn't see what I saw. I was locked on, deadpan staring, with all the blood drained from my face. A large mass, adapting the contrasted black of encroaching night, mimicked the tree's bushy leaves with its ruffled feathers, blending seamlessly to those unaware, but I was keen to its presence. It's exactly as I had seen it before, only this time, it had eyes. It watched me carefully, unmoving yet relentlessly shivering. Undenounced to him, but this creature, whatever it was, was feeding thoughts into my head. Some melodic chant that I didn't understand just looped over and over, just whispering to me, beckoning me to do something. But for the life of me, I cannot recall what it wanted. 
My friend knew what I was seeing was real to me, even though he was blind to it. So he got in front of me and began shouting at this thing, whatever it was, cursing at it, his voice billowing through the surrounding forest. He called it every curse he knew, told it that if it didn't leave me alone, he would kill it. Amazingly, this thing reacted to his threats. It unfolded its body, of which had no distinguishable shapes or features outside of an amalgamated blob of black and feathers to blend. Then, I assume it leapt into the air, but its body turned to nothing more than wispy, thin streaks of black across the pale gray sky. Still its hold gripped me, for minutes. Then I uttered it was gone, and he rushed me back inside not questioning the validity of what I thought I saw, but trusting that I knew it to be real. To this day, I don't know what that thing was or why it was there. Hell, why it was dissuaded by my friend's threats. But I never dreamt of it again. And that tree, day and night, was forever shorter. The day I almost disappeared. This story confuses me to this day, even more so considering that similar visions happen much later in life, but under entirely different circumstances. If I remember correctly, I was 16 and home alone. It was probably close to 6 in the evening at the tail end of summer. This time of year it was still getting dark at about 7 or 8 o'clock, depending on the day, but as I sat in my room playing Modern Warfare 3, there was still more than enough daylight. It was a quiet day, listening to the Rooster Teeth podcast and grinding up prestiges, paving the way for a calm weekend. I don't know where my family was that day, but I knew I would be home alone until probably 8.30 or so. Nothing was different about the day, nothing at all, but I vividly remember playing the game and mid-match just setting the controller down. I paused the podcast and looked to my left out the big window which overlooked the leech field, burn pile, and surrounding trees. A ringing silence filled my ears, but I don't remember hearing or seeing anything that would trigger this particular instance. The next thing I knew, I got up and walked out my door. I was in a trance of some sort, but not an invasive one. There were no hostile thoughts, no motivation. I just wanted to go outside, into the woods. So I casually walked over the broken glass surrounding the burn pile in the front yard, stomped through the mud and pushed through low-hanging foliage. The forest was never something I felt wary of up until this point. We often played airsoft in this exact spot behind the house, and I would sometimes film YouTube vlogs out here when I needed separation. So I entered without fear or hesitation. The problem is, I just kept going. The land we lived on was rocky and uneven with old strings of barbed wire and sharp rocks all over the place just strewn about haphazardly, but none of that slowed me down. I was used to the terrain already, but it wasn't something like 300 yards into the forest when I'd suddenly stopped. Now this, I can paint clearly in my mind, exactly as it played out. I stood there, barely able to see my house behind me, looking off into the depths of crooked trees and gnarled branches. As I was standing there alone, I could hear something impossible. The sound of children playing at a park. The rusted twist of an old swing set, the scrape of fabric gliding down slides, and of course, the gleeful laughter of pure innocence. It was faint at first, but gradually grew louder, without any source to be determined. I wasn't put off by this. I didn't even react until I noticed the forest became significantly darker, as if I had slipped on sunglasses. The playground bolstered at this point, and I was dropped back into my own mind. Right now, as I write this for you, I'm getting chills. Sheer panic took over, and I whipped my head in circles, the voices fading away, but the world remaining dismal. I could see my house. In the encroaching darkness, I remember feeling like I was just plopped back into reality. Like this whole entire journey into the forest was some type of delusion that I had known to exist, but somehow existed outside of my own reality, my own grasp. But when I was finally dropped back, I ran. I ran as fast as I could back to the house with the looming shadows quick on my heels. I broke the tree line and immediately felt a veil lift, but I didn't look back. In fact, the second I cleared the forest and could see open skies, my pace slowed to a hasty walk, immediately trusting my surroundings. 
However, that's where I solidified the fact that time had indeed escaped me. When I walked out to the forest, it was not even close to turning dark yet. I still had plenty of daylight, as I said. But now, night would fall within minutes of me exiting the forest. Re-entering the house, panting heavily, I tripped over my own shoes by the front door. I never even put them on. That was the most striking thing. This was the only time that that happened to me, and to this day I think back on it, relating to other stories I've heard across the internet. That being said, I still don't fear that forest, and I play airsoft regularly with my friends and family. Never, though, would I go back out there in the dark alone. Because I'm sure that if I had stayed, if I had allowed that peaceful nihility to take me over, I might not have come back. And when I go out there now, I have on many occasions followed my exact pathing to where I remember waking up. But I can't find that spot. That spot does not exist. I've searched through and through, and it doesn't exist. Where I came to, those specific trees that circled me, that open space and the moss beneath my feet, it's not there. <laughs>